So today's tutorial is about alpha channels and luma mats. And this is basically the idea that you can create a black and white layer that is a luminance layer or an alpha channel that will tell whatever software you're using what part of an image is see-through, what part isn't. So black and white images are the best uh, for this. Uh, you can apply a luminance mat to all sorts of different kinds of images, but it's a lot easier if it's in a grayscale. So if we go to this image here, I like to use the sky replacement tool that is brand new in the Adobe Photoshop because it does exactly what we want to do as sort of compositors, but it does it automatically and it does a really good job. So here what it does is it figures out where the skyline is and then replaces the sky. So I can have any kind of sky I want if I want it to be blue, which doesn't make sense for the light that's on the water here. Uh, so to go back to the one we had is fine. This one has a mountain, which is right in the middle of Lake Superior, apparently. Uh, this one looks perfectly fine. If I hit OK, it's going to make new layers. And when it makes the new layers, it creates a luminance mat for you. So in Photoshop, unlike After Effects, After Effects has masking, but they do it different than you do it in Photoshop. Photoshop here, you have a layer mask that's beside it. In after Effects, we deal with it different. We're going to look at that in a second. So now we're in After Effects. What I want to do is just bring in some sample footage that I have. NVMe 2. All right, so I have here um, a bunch of images. One of them is a green screen footage. Now green screen is a great place to start because the whole idea of green screen is that we want to remove the green thus creating a luminance mat. So black and white image that tells us what part I can see through, what part I can't see through. So I'm just going to drag this over top of here, create a new composition. It's the exact size. If I hit Command or Control K, the composition settings will come up and you can see uh, the dimensions. It's kind of a weird thing. It's 2048 by 1080. It says it's 2K, but that's sort of a bizarro sort of thing. 25, so it's PAL, and it's 18 seconds long. So we're going to trim this, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let's just make this a clean 1080, 24. You can see that it's a little bit over the side, but this is now the image that we would expect for an HD image. Uh, so let's uh, just find some area here that we'd like. So a little bit of movement, so she lifts she lifts her hand here, and this is uh, this is where you can, in your timeline here, uh, trim it. So I can hit B, which is brings this little pointer here, the work area, start to my cursor, and then when she zip, zips it off and goes down, I'll say okay, that's fine for this. So I'm just going to hit N, so B and N. I can drag these as well if you wanted to drag these around or move the entire bar if you want uh, you can do that so now I'm just working on just that area and there you go now this is great if you're working on something that's got like lots of layers and it's really bogging you down or your computer down and even though you are going to use the entire image uh, the entire time you can still go into a work area and just say I'm just working on this part here and if your computer takes a long time sort of rendering all the frames, you're only rendering the ones you need, not the ones outside of what you need. So, but I'm going to right click on this little bar here and I'm going to hit trim conf to work area. Now I know there's lots of people that have only really work on, you know, the little bit uh, of the front end of something is have a big tail out and they're working in the work area. I always trim it. It's just cleaner that way. That's just me. That's up to you, but you know if you're working in a studio or you're um, working with other people, it's always good to do that sort of thing. And if I want to, I can rename this layers, just green screen. So now what I want to do is an extract the mat. I'm going to extract a mat here. So I'm going to go under my effects, go keying, and I'm going to go to key light. And in key light, I want to sample the area that I want to get rid of, the color I want to get rid of. 
I could do it out here or over here, but I really want to go close to my character, as close as possible. You see she's got a bit of a shadow down here as well. So the green is, you know, it's not as easy to your eye, but it's there. So somewhere in here maybe I'll try. And that extracts a mat for me, which is great. You say, that's perfect, let's move on. You're like, no, it's not done. How do you know, Mark? Because if I go under final result here and switch this to my screen mat, we can see the alpha mat. And you can see that there's all sorts of noise and stuff that's all through here that I want to clean up. And clean up is easily done. You know, where you want to start is you clip black and clip white. Uh, generally work on this grow and shrink and the softness. A little bit on gain. Depends on what your green screen, you know, looks like. And so you can try the various things and combinations of it to just try to get to where you're going. So I'm just I'm just gonna start actually on the clip black here. I'm just gonna say push, 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 push until I get like a nice clean see-through. Makes quite a bit, like 30. Most of it's gone except for this bit in the top, and then we'll we'll just mask this. I will do a garbage mat, get rid of that, just so that we're not affecting the image too much by pushing it too much just for one little area that we can just easily get rid of. So now I'm going to go to the clip whites and I'm going to start bringing that down and pretty quickly they're popping. So nice and clean edges and the grayscale stuff is sort of like half see-through, right? So it's not just a black and white image. It can have 50% gray would be 50% transparent, 25% gray, 75% gray. You get the idea. So it'll be various degrees of transparency, like in here, there, there's a little bit of gray going on. So I'm just going to get rid of that uh, in a second, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to look at the actual intermediate result. And it's looking okay. You know, it's... This is where you start to see, like, where there's softness inherent in the actual image itself. Like this hair... It's kind of soft and mucky down here, but the hair actually is kind of soft here. So it's, you know, it's just uh, from the camera lens. But I can still play around with this a little bit. So um, I can take the screen softness and just soften the edge slightly, just a little bit. Don't do a lot. So 0.5 maybe or one pixel. And I'm just going to shrink it just slightly again. I'm going to go into one pixel and just take a look at it. Yeah, it just pulls in. So any sort of green pixels that were there are now sort of tightened in. But I don't want to do it too much because, you know, it's going to start looking terrible. And I put this on a, a red background, by the way, just, just because it's it just it's the one that's going to show you, to me at least, the, the red always shows you, like, where the real flaws are in the image. So it, it doesn't um, sugarcoat it for you at all. And right now I'm using the composition background. So in composition settings, I want a red background. If I change this to a different color, then I'll just go to the equivalent green. <laughs> and we're back on the green screen. Let's go to blue. Um, same idea. Actually, blue is kind of helpful now because then we can see where all the green is. All right, so, so there we have it. The mat's pretty good. Now I just want to, you know, futz it a little bit more. So I'm going to go into my effects. Try these. You don't always have to use them. Sometimes you get a nice clean key. Sometimes you, you know, you don't. Uh, so there are different uh, methods and things you can play around with. Uh, certainly try playing with the uh, key cleaner. And what that's going to do is sort of work on these areas that are like this. You see it's bringing back a little bit of stuff, which is good. It's nothing like getting a haircut where, you know, the whole thing's just, there, there's no wisps of anything anymore. It's just, a, a, you give it a big old haircut and everything just is a bowl cut. So we don't want that. We do want wisps of hair. Uh, or if, you know, if the sweater was fuzzy or something, you'd want to be able to see the, the edges of the fuzziness of the sweater, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not a fuzzy sweater though, so it's not a big deal. All right, and the last thing I want to do, and the last thing I want to do is I want to uh, just punch out this green here. See, there's all sorts of green in here, and the blue is really highlighting it for us more so than the red was. Um, 
So you can see there's green in the helmet and there's green on her hair. And this, this is, you know, it's not as easy to see, but this is definitely easier to see. So what I'm going to do is I want to use uh, a spill suppressor. So I'm going to take this spill and I'm just going to say get rid of it. And it does like right out of the box here. It does an excellent job of just smashing all that green out. And now, hey, it actually looks a lot better. And there we have uh, our composite. And if we go back down here and we look at the alpha channel uh, through the composition window, I go to alpha now, I can see the alpha channel that we've created. Still have this problem though. So how do I deal with that problem? Easily, we'll just create a mask. And this is what you'd call a garbage mat. Um, so you find our range of motion in this. Our fingers go to that side. I think she goes all the way to the end here. So that's good to know. So now what we want to do is take, say, a masking tool here, like a pen tool. And this side's all right. I'm not going to worry about that. This side's all right. It's just this one area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mask around here. And now it's gone. So now uh, that just solves that problem. And I didn't have to really push hard on the actual mat itself to get rid of that when I could just sort of get rid of it manually. And now it's a nice clean key. Go back to my RGB channels. And there I have it. And now if I want to, I can put a background in. So for example, uh, I'm going to put these lights in on the background. So this is 4K lights. So, and I'm just using my mouse wheel, but you guys can uh, command plus and minus or use your trackpad. You can see that I'm still on my pen tool. So I'm going to move to my selection tool and I can resize this. Now, if you hold down shift, it'll hold its, hold its um, shape. If I don't, then I can warp it and do all kinds of stuff like that. I might want to do that. I don't on this, but I might want to do that on something. So let's say this is the background. Now, in terms of a composite, it's pretty, you know, she just looks like she's been pasted into something. So you as a compositor, of course, want to try to find a way to get this to look like it sort of cohesive and there's something to it. And the question is, do I try to bring the background to her or her to the background? So I'm going to try to bring her to the background. So by that, I mean trying to change her color sort of so that she looks like there's these blues are in there. Um, you know, it's just our first step of sort of trying to combine, combine this into an image that looks like it sort of belongs together. So let's go into uh, color correction. Now you can see in After Effects, and what makes it such a powerful program is there's so many things you can use. And all of these do a very similar or a similar things to one another. A lot of them do. Uh, so if you want to do black and white or, or curves, things like that, well, you can do that in a Lumetri color. But you can have individual controls over everything. And everything is, of course, uh, animatable. So I put something in. I can animate it. That's the great thing about After Effects. The metric color does give you all of the color uh, options that you sort of get in something like Resolve. So all sorts of um, variations of things that you can do. Very powerful. You can do curves. You can do hue versus saturation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can really target uh, the colors in your image very much in the way that you can. And, uh, high-end programs like Resolve, and they're sort of built for this sort of thing. So After Effects is uh, not without me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the the shadows to the blue here. So you can see in the background here, the shadows or the darker areas are quite sort of dark, dark blue. So I'm going to push mine here for her into the dark blues, and I'm going to deepen them a bit. So I'm going to take this slider and just start pulling it down. And already we're starting to get somewhere. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push, since there's so much purple and blue, I'm going to take the midtones as well, and I'm going to just start. I think tonally they're all right, but and just cool everything off. And I could play around here as well in the basic corrections by working on the tint or light balance. You know, if I wanted to do that sort of thing. That's kind of interesting because now it's bringing in sort of the, these colors here. So, so now she feels much more a part of this world than she did before. <clears throat> um, so say I want to, you know, add another element here. I'm going to create a HUD element. Uh, so I'm going to go to my project. I have one called a circle and I'm going to put this over top. And there it is. It's like a little circle for a HUD. And I'm going to hit S for scale. So down here you can see the scale has come up and I can scale this up a little bit. And then you can see that I can ma match her animation wise. I can match her with the, the HUD in a second. But for now what I want to do is show you that if I sing do a single on this, this has an alpha channel. And it's just the black and white information that it's reading on this movie that is telling it what part of it is see-through and what part isn't. So I'm going to go back to my composite here. And now with this one here, I'm going to drop my my resolution to a quarter to work on this because I don't want to have to wait and then say I do want she sort of reaches up for it reaches up so there I'm going to start my animation up to there say something like that I can hit P for position start a keyframe notice if I don't do that then nothing's going to happen and then I'm going to so one, two, three, four, five, six. So five frames or so, bring it down. Let it do its animate a bit. And I'm just gonna leave her do her thing. But this part I want her to swipe it off. And of course you can do a lot more than this if you were to use this, but now what I want to do here is I want to hold this position from here to here. So I'm going to click on the position keyframe again so nothing's happened between these two keyframes. And then she swipes it off and I'm just going to get it to go off. There we go. And here we go. And it goes on, blah, blah, blah. She does another thing. Of course you could build an animation like this, no problem. And then Done. Perfect. So say I wanted to add another element to this. Um, there's a little DNA strand thing. So I'll put the DNA strand on as well. Put that in over top. Well, yeah, I'll put it underneath this one because when it swipes it. Now this one here, uh, if I can place it on this side, and you know, I'm just making this up as we go along, no big deal. But you'll see that it's going to only be on the screen for so long and then it goes off. So one of the things that I want to pay uh, you to, to notice is if I go up to here, DNA in the project, and I right click on it and I say interpret footage right there, interpret footage main, this window comes up and now it's telling, it, telling After Effects how to read this image. So it says, obviously, it has an alpha channel. If I say ignore, then it's just going to come in as a, you know, a blob. Uh, so just for example, see, that's why it's going to come in. If I say just don't think of the alpha channel, but I want it to think of the alpha channel because it's already in it. And I can invert that as well. So it goes like that, but let's not do that. Uh, but what I want to do is use this looping feature. This is great for animations and things like this. 
I can just say loop this 10 times and it'll just keep playing it. And that means that I can just take it down here. I can just pull it all the way th through the entire animation and there it will stand. So you could build this animation uh, as well. Now here, you know, her, her finger is underneath this. So I can move these things so that it's a background element and all that sort of blurry and stuff. So I could actually even put like a little Gaussian blur on this or something to make it feel like it's part of that background that was, even though it didn't come with that background, I can uh, add a Gaussian blur. Blur it a little bit. And I could add, like, say, a glow. So if I go to my effects and presets here, if you don't have this, let's go under your window. And, and anything that you don't have, uh, you can turn on. So scopes, things like that, anything, and you can turn them off as well. So just keep your work area the way you like to keep it. Effects and presets are here, and I'll just type in glow. And there's various glows here that I can use. I'm just going to use the standard stylized glow. And I'll put that on top of the DNA strand. And it's order of operations, so it's Gaussian blur and then glow, but I can also do glow then Gaussian blur as well. I don't know if that's really going to make a difference for this one. A little bit. So you can, it'll do one and then the other. So just so you know, that's a very important thing to keep in mind. Let's just say 10 for this. Intensity, let's say 5 for a glow. And now that just a part of the background. And if I wanted to, I can put this on a blending mode as well. So if I just wanted to put on overlay, then it really feels like it's more of a part of the background because it's starting to take elements of the background. Which means if I were to move it over a little bit, as you can see here, it'll start to take that. And now it feels like it was a part of the image all along. So what we're trying to understand here is just the idea of luma mats and alpha channels. So that is how you do it with a green screen. And all we're doing is trying to create a clean separation and then combine that separated element with the other element. This, of course, is huge for any green screen work you do in film and television. It's also a big deal if you want to do set extensions, anything like that, uh, which is a, a thing that they do a lot because it saves a whole <laughs> bunch of production money uh, to not have to build uh, cities in the background. So, uh, or even, you know, you know, the fantasy films you see all the time, the castles and the castle extensions. Just need a few rocks on a set and then just extend the rest of it. And the other thing I could do for it to make this a little better is I can create a solid to make this combine even better. Put the solid over top and it's obviously covering it up, but now I can put it on a mode, which will be add, which is obviously too much. But then I can hit T for opacity and I can take this down to say 40% and now it feels like we're sort of looking at her through a screen or something. Maybe we're inside the television. I don't know. If you don't have mode, by the way, in track mat, it's this toggle switches down here that'll toggle that and that'll take you to motion blur. So when we're taking this, um, this element right here, if I want to create a motion blur for that, What I can do is I can turn on motion blur. Now this is just turning it on. It's enabling it for the entire composition. I've not actually enabled it for any layer. And I'll tell you why this is important. The reason why this is important is because even though it's turned on, nothing is using it. So my render speeds are fast, relatively speaking. But if I take this circle and I If I take this circle and I turn on the motion blur, you can see now it's adding a motion blur to the animation. And that takes a little bit of computing cycles. So if I've got a bunch of motion blurs on set up on my uh, animations here that I like, I like them, but I, you know, it's taking time to render them every time I want to do a preview, I can just 
disable the motion blur for the composition work quickly. And then when I want to, I can just re-enable it to render it. So that's what the motion blur will do for you. It's going to be a lot better looking for your animation if you have some degree of motion blur and just help sell everything. It just feels more natural. So I'm going to get rid of all this and start over with one more uh, thing, just talking about uh, Luma mats.